All right, so the remaining topic for, for limits has to do with continuity. So continuity is more or less a property saying that the limit of a function agrees with the value of the function at every point. Okay? Uh, intuitively, a continuous function is one where the graph doesn't have any, any breaks or gaps in it. Um, but the, the basic part of the definition, we start with what it means to be continuous at a point. So, so a function f is continuous at some point, say x equals c, if, well, we need the limit as x approaches c of f of x to equal f of c. Okay? Now, um, you can go from here and you can, you can extend this to uh, continuity on intervals. Um, but let's stop and think for a second about what this is saying. So being continuous at a point, right, means what? So let's say C is here, okay? So basically the, the definition of continuity at a point is telling you that two numbers are equal. Remember that a limit is just a number, right? Um, but before I can compare two numbers, I need to know that those numbers are defined, right? So first thing I need to know is that the limit exists. And that means that in particular, the limit as x approaches c from the left, well, it had better equal the limit as x approaches c from the right, yeah? So left-hand limit has to equal, let's say some number, let's, let's call it, uh, I don't know, k, right? The right-hand limit has to equal k. Uh, but simply, simply showing that the limit exists is not enough. And this is where a lot of students will go wrong if they're asked to show that a function is continuous on a test. Um, they'll, they'll demonstrate that the limit exists and they'll leave it at that. Uh, but existence of a limit is not good enough, all uh, right? Continuity has this extra requirement that the limit has to agree with the value of the function at that point, right? This comes back to this, it's, it's this direct substitution property that we saw when we were looking at kind of analytic methods for limits, right? Um, continuity means that the limit can be evaluated by direct substitution, okay? But things could go wrong, right? It could be that, you know, f of c is defined at some other value here, in which case you still would not have continuity, right? Saying, saying con that your function is continuous means that this hole we have right now, you can plug that hole. If, if that hole is plugged, then you have a continuous function, right? So f of c has to have that same value, right? So there's actually several things to check here, right? Depending on the function, right? Especially if you've got a piecewise defined function, you're going to have to check the left-hand limit. You're going to have to check the right-hand limit. Make sure that those are the same. Check the value of the function. Make sure that that's the same too, right? All this stuff has to agree before you can say that a function is continuous. Once you know how to, what it means for a function to be continuous at a point, um, well, then you can go on and you can say, well, what does it mean to be continuous on, let's say, an interval? So if it's continuous on some interval, say, a b, open interval, well, that means that f is continuous at c for each c in the interval. Okay, simple enough. Continuous on an interval means continuous at every point in the interval. Makes sense, uh, except if you're dealing with a closed interval, we can't quite say this because we can't necessarily talk about continuity at 
the endpoints in the same language because we might be dealing with a function whose domain is a closed interval and then, you know, we might not be able to talk about the limit at the left endpoint, the overall limit at the left endpoint, because the function might not be defined for x less than a, in which case it's only possible to look at a right-hand uh, right limit. Similarly, at the right endpoint, it might be that we can only look at the left-hand limit because the function might not be defined to the right of b. So if we wanted to say what it means for a function to be continuous on a closed interval, Well, that means that, first of all, it has to be continuous on the open interval. And we need the limit as x approaches a from the right to equal f of a. And we need the limit as x approaches b from the left to equal f of b, okay? So if you have all those things, then you could talk about a function being continuous on a closed interval. Um, what we're going to see in the next few videos as we look through some examples is that there, there are a couple typical types of questions that you could be asked on continuity. Um, one is you'll be handed a piecewise defined function and you'll be asked to show that it's continuous at a particular point, in which case you're relying on all of this, right? You're checking all these conditions. You might be given a function and be asked what intervals is it continuous on, um, in which case you might be doing a bit of this, but you're also going to be relying on some of the limit properties we've already established, right? Those properties that told us about what happens with polynomials, trig functions, things like that, those are really statements about continuity, um, even though we didn't phrase it in that language at that time. Uh, so we're gonna look at some few basic examples, then we're gonna establish some properties of continuity um, or continuous functions that will let us say a little bit more um, before we move on.